So back to my original point. I became what I might call an accidental teacher. Through luck, chance, fate, and the encouragement of a good friend. And what I owe the Academy now is this. It's really quite simple. You gave me something larger than myself to believe in, to love, to respect, and to be a part of, and where my contributions could count for something. And that is a gift I can never repay. And of course, when I talk about the Academy, I'm talking about its people. And that means I'm talking about you and your families and all of the students and colleagues that I've had the wonderful opportunity to work with over so many years. If I tried to start mentioning individual students or favorite memories or great moments, we might all be here till New Year's. So just know that you, along with so many others that are not with us today are among those individuals and families. And it is you and they that make up so many, many, many priceless memories and moments that I will carry with me always. And I just happen to have an excellent bar of Swiss chocolate <laughs> for the first person after we're done here that can quote to me accurately the first verse of Ophia de Camaray. <laughs> so, that will mean something to some of you out there. Uh, and I want to say to all Academy alums, which now happily includes so many women, uh, that you are an amazing and select group, and that the record of your accomplishments at Academy and after Academy uh, is nothing short of astonishing and continues to be. Congratulations to all of you, and keep up the good work. And I want you to know how very proud we are of all of you. And to this year's seniors, congratulations, and good luck. You will soon be officially part of this illustrious group, and uh, we're very glad to welcome you. We know you'll be great at what you do. And also, there are a few colleagues that I want to take the time to mention while I have this opportunity. When I first began at Academy, I quickly learned to admire and respect a core of senior faculty who served as examples and mentors for all of us in our younger days. There was Rainey Taylor, and Mac Duncan, John Dietrich, Kevin Morin, Jack White, Phil Hess, Jim Stahl, and I will include Rufus Curry in that group, and there were others. I want to recognize them and thank them now for what they did for me and for what they meant to me and the Academy. And some of them are here today, and if I just mentioned you, we please stand? I think, John, I know I saw you. Would you just stand for a moment, let us all recognize you, John Dietrich, Kevin Morin. Just for a moment. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And I have to tell you this, that as these men began to retire, one by one, and as I was getting along in my own years as a teacher, I felt myself thinking from time to time, well, Moody, you must be on your way to becoming one of these elder statesmen, as, as we like to call them. And uh, I would try to imagine what that would feel like. And then as a few more years went by, I began to realize something. I wasn't feeling anything that I might call Rainy Taylorness or <laughs> Mac Duncanness. Uh, I was disappointed. And I began to wonder <laughs> why that was, uh, and it gradually began to dawn on me. I was getting clues all the time. I need to take a sip of water. Yes, I was getting clues all the time. 
And these clues came in the form of questions that my students seemed to always ask me year after year. Uh, and why was I not feeling any rainy tailorness? Well, just imagine Rainey or any of these others being asked these types of questions. Let me give you a few examples. I think you'll, you'll see what I mean. Uh, can you imagine hearing a student say, Mr. Duncan, will you please show us your tattoos? <laughs> uh, no, no. Or, or maybe uh, Coach White, was that really you out there painting the Nelson Road Bridge with the seniors last weekend? <laughs> I don't think you would hear that. Uh, or maybe, Mr. Taylor, is it true that you stole a flamingo from the New Orleans Zoo? <laughs> uh, I don't think Mr. Taylor got asked that question. Uh, or one more example. Uh, Coach Stahl, will you tell us about those four days you spent in a Mexican prison? <laughs> no. I, I, I think you get the idea. Uh, so anyway, I, I didn't become an elder statesman after all those years. But I did become an elder. An elder what? I, I don't know. Exactly, but an elder at any rate, and, and believe me, that's okay with me. I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, and by the way, just for the record, I did not steal that flamingo. <laughs> I just borrowed him for a couple of, <laughs> couple of days. So at any rate, that's a brief look back. And in conclusion, uh, you may wonder how I look at life now. And let me share a quote with you from one of my favorite French philosophers and writers, uh, Albert Camus. He said, L'automne est un deuxième printemps où chaque fleur, chaque feuille est une fleur. Autumn is a second spring where each leaf is a flower. So, thank you again all very much for this honor.